I grew up going to the beaches with my dad, and we were able to watch really high-level volleyball, and he was able to coach me. I really just learned a lot about life and doing things you don't want to do. He really gave me self-belief that I could do anything I wanted. That's really been why I've wanted to give that back to others. When you start naming off top coaches, you're naming a bunch of people that are a lot older than she is. She has the highest winning percentage of any coach in history. When she took over, it really hasn't missed a beat. Heather's success at BYU almost didn't happen. Just a normal pregnancy, excited to be expecting my fourth baby. I started with a cough and it concerned the doctor after about three months and we discovered that I had a tumor in my lung. Things were happening so fast. It was like different opinions were happening daily from different doctors and it was just barrage. Each time I'd go up there, there'd be a different diagnosis and a different opinion. It seemed to be fast growing and that they felt that I only had three months to live if nothing was done. And that was just, what? I was advised by doctors that I should abort to save my life. Then the doctor decided to take a final ultrasound scan of the growing fetus. I was awake during that scan, and when I heard one of the doctors say, oh dear, I wondered what they'd found now. But everything changed for me when the doctor said, you are carrying twins. In that moment, I said to myself, the Lord did not allow me to conceive twins only to abort them. I'm going to deliver the babies. If I die, I die. Believing she had three months to live, they wanted to try to find other options and other people that believed what they did in not aborting the babies. You have to remember that all of this is pre-electronic uh, era. All I remember is it was a Sunday. I went across the street, there was a payphone. I called Dr. Nelson. The doctors here say it's this, they say it's this, that I have to do this, that. And I remember him being, not gruff, but being very firm and saying, young man, do you want to talk? Or would you like to listen to me? So I listened to him and I just felt comfortable with what what he had to say. Well, I've got the record of my work on her right here, so I'll read it. The date of this operation was June 16th, 1980. This patient, 30 years of age, is pregnant with twins. She's about 16 weeks into her pregnancy. And she had symptoms of cough and shortness of breath, so her obstetrician got a chest X-ray which revealed a large tumor in the right lung. I operated upon her at their request that the only way that we could remove it surgically was to take out the whole lung. It was complete inspiration and revelation on that surgery table that he received to know how to navigate that treacherous surgery. This is the kind of an operation that doesn't happen very often. In fact, one time in my career, when I got down to the very most crucial part of the operation, I found that there wasn't a way I could get the tumor away from the heart. There was only room for the blade of the scissors. So I cut the artery and put my finger in the pulmonary artery. And he said, I put my finger in there and did the surgery with one hand. And then put the stitches around the artery and pulled those up and pulled my finger out and tied them down and she survived. So it ended up not just being about the tumor, it ended up, you know, being the journey that our family took. When she gave birth, it had many complications. She needed to get blood transfusions and so through that she contracted hepatitis C. They didn't know the treatment for it. They didn't know the life expectancy, but they knew it was life-threatening. So I spent a number of years learning how to deal with that, not knowing that someday they would find a treatment. Growing up, our mom always treated Heather and I as miracles and said we were her miracle twins to anyone she met. 
She is an unbelievable mom to all her, all her seven kids. I think that my mom's showed us that we can do hard things, that we can make a decision, stick with it, and see it through to the end, and that we can accomplish and overcome any hard trials that we might have in our life. Can you imagine the courage of that woman when the doctors in California had not been able to remove it surgically and really couldn't help her? She was willing to lay her life on the line for those children. It's a miracle that I'm alive, and I'm grateful for the example of my parents and my mom and my dad who've taught me how to love and how to work hard and how to believe, and I want to give that to others. I don't think she was saved just for this, but I think this is her mission. Her ability to coach and use what she has seen and learned through her whole life and change the lives and affect the lives of young women. At the end of the 2018 season, uh, we were out of the Final Four and they recognized Heather as the National Coach of the Year, which is a really big deal. As a coach, that's the highest award you can get. But the coolest thing about Heather is she doesn't need those accolades to change how she feels about herself or how she continues coaching. What was special is that she asked us to come with her when she was receiving the award because she always tells us that it's a team award and she never made it about herself, but she made it about the team. I can't imagine being at this program without her as our coach. I want the young women on our team to learn never to give up, to always go after what you want throughout their life. They're gonna go through hard things, and so we just need to keep pushing one foot in front of the other with faith, and we can accomplish many, many things together as a team especially, and win and lose, and still be kind and loving, and be a great example to the community and many people who are watching our team play.